sometimes you'll come across something that you have seen a thousand times, yet it seems a bit off. For me, this was exactly the case when Akeza reached out to us regarding their newest Oto SF12 fan. Sure, it's a 120mm fan like any other out there. Okay, the wings are maybe a bit bent weirdly for an airflow optimized fan, but there wasn't any like obvious reason why the fan weirded me out. But believe me, it, it did weird me out. Okay, so this is Akeza's newest Oto SF12 airflow optimized fan. As my focus on the word airflow suggests, there is also a static pressure optimized version, but that's for a completely different video. This one is all about the SF12. So let's quickly cover all of the usual stuff, because there is a bunch of really weird stuff that I want to get into. Using 9 quite short but weirdly bent wings, which Akeza just calls S-flow design, combined with a bit of extra moto heat dissipation, the SF12s are able to spin at 2000 rpm while pushing 97.02 CFM at 3.59 mm of H2O. Yes, you heard that right. Those are crazy numbers, 3.59 mm of H2O as an airflow, airflow optimized fan. To control all of this, we have the usual 4-pin PVM connection, which really seems to be a tiny bit intelligent. Not that it will measure any temperature by itself, but it will regulate its own speed more like relaxed than a normal fan who's just following blindly a PVM signal. This then creates kind of an accelerating sound effect once the fan is starting to ramp up. Inside the packaging we will not find the usual suspect in form of four different fan screws, but Akeza did just go a bit further. Now, we already had these kinds of rubber knobs included in the Cooler Master SF fans, and let's just say they work, but they can't really keep them in place. Sure, the fan will not fall out of the case, that's not what will happen, but if you have some sort of, of rail like you usually have in the front and you install a single fan in the very front, in the very top, you can bet your ass that it will just slowly glide down with time. That being said, I also wanted to give Akeza some credit regarding their packaging. With the previous OA Operands, they produced a box which prevented you from reading the spec sheet unless you bought the fan and removed the plastic film on there. On here, however, you can read it entirely. And that's basically exactly how a box is supposed to be designed, so good job there. Okay, with the general stuff out of the way, let's get to the weird stuff. You might have noticed that there is absolutely no rubber ar around the screw holes that could be eliminating any vibrations. Now, there's a reason for that. And that reason is actually a completely different feature, which conveniently doubles as an anti-vibration rubber. For ease of cleaning reasons, Akeza separated the fan into two individual pieces, a frame part which is screwed onto your case or radiator and a fan section which is attached to the rest using four rubber pieces, conveniently doubling as anti-vibration pads. The idea behind all of this is quite simple, you can take it off and that's quite easy then to remove the dust, but that's basically it. Although I think the idea is really cool, it's not really well thought through though. If we take Let's say you mounted the fan in the in the front of the case from the inside. So here we have the main board and all, and, and here is the fan against the, the chassis. Now you can just pull out the fan if it lets me. You can just pull out the fan and then you can clean it and, and whatnot, and, and this works really well. But what happens if you, for example, you want to install the fan outside of the main compartment? and it would be pulling air into the case. Well, yeah, that, that won't work. And yeah, that's basically the problem. So in, in my opinion, it's a great idea but uh, for cleaning purposes, but it would need to be a bit better thought through. Like this, the main fan section needs to be removable from both sides to make this useful in every scenario. So there you already have a could have been better section. No, 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 no. Now comes the important part. This thing is IP68 rated. IP68. That means I can sandblast that sucker and then throw it into a pool at least one meter deep. I've had the fans for two or three weeks now and I feel, until now I 
did not find even a single use case where water resistance could be useful. Sand, sure. If, if you've seen the latest Jace 2 Sense video, um, depending on if you need to travel through a mile of desert to get to the next grocery store, sand may very well be an issue, but water? What, what, what's the plan here? In the end, I really don't care who needs it, I want to know if it works. Therefore, I brought my, my loyal friend in its second evolution, a random box filled with water. Okay, so theoretically, I should be able to just throw them in here and they will keep working. Oh, this feels wrong. This feels very, very, very wrong. Uh, to give you a short explanation, the fan is running based on some Nochiwa external PVM connector. And um, it is connected to some old power supply, which is then just sitting there and uh, letting that th thing spin. And no, of course, I will not disconnect the fan, I uh, want to try it while it is spinning. Nowhere does it say that uh, these supposedly super strong materials stop being water resistant once the fan is spinning. It does not say it is only res resistant while it is off. It's like a phone, it's supposed to work on the water for an hour, not, you know. Yeah. It just sucked itself to the front. Like, if I pull it to the back, it just sucks itself to the front. <laughs> How stupid is this? Still working fine? Well, this is the dumbest thing I have done on camera for now. With that out of the way, I did my benchmarks in advance. While letting the SF12 spin at 100% of their 2000 RPM speed, they managed to keep the 3700X at 47 degrees C, placing them right next to Cooler Master's SF120M and behind Arctic's 140mm Bionics P140 fans. Even though this is a pretty good start, these fans spin crazy strong and therefore crazy loud. While normalizing our results, we can see that these SF12s are keeping those 47 degrees C at a significant noise cost. While lowering the fan speed slightly, we see that the SF12s blend in pretty nicely with many other fans and that at some point their noise and performance lines up perfectly with Arctix P12 ARGB. But from there on, even with lower speeds, the fan just doesn't become significantly quieter, which ends up with this offset line that reaches thermal throttling at a way louder moment than any other fan. Another point about that noise issue is that you can very clearly hear the bearing. On both the SF12 and SC12, no matter the fan speed, you can clearly hear some sort of whining in the background. It's not that annoying on lower speeds, but you can clearly hear it all the time. So where does this leave us? Every single aspect, like the color scheme, and I kind of enjoy the design, but still, the, the dust and water resistance, the removable anti-vibration frame, the easy cleaning solution, and the crazy high numbers and noise, each and every of these points, in my opinion, applies to a fan for industrial applications. Not that this is a, a bad thing, it's really not, but pretty much every single of these aspects is close to useless in a home PC scenario. In a PC built for, I don't know, to control a sand blasting machine, in, in such a scenario everything makes complete sense. Especially that crazy pressure number, I, I have never seen an airflow focused fan capable of performing like an SF12, those things are pretty crazy. To make the fan appropriate for home use applications, you would still need to get that noise down, at, at least in the lower fan speeds. It's not normal that you can hear the fan in the lowest possible fan speed. That being said, I do know that Akaza is stating that the fan is meant for industrial use, but it took until after my benchmarks for me to realize it, so I believe it could be emphasized a bit more on the first product page, maybe. Okay, on the price side, um, the fans are going for around 25 euros, and I am unsure what to do about it. I don't know if being 
waterproof counts as an extra, extra expensive feature. I, I don't know, but if you want to do some really wacky stuff to your fans, it's going to set you back 25 euros. So now, now you know. But okay, this should be it for Akeza's Oto SF12 fan. At this point, I would like to thank Akeza for sending over these, yeah, I kid you not, waterproof fans. If you want to keep watching, have a look at Akeza Solo AR fans. Those are actually meant for home use applications and they have RGB and all that, all of that normal stuff. On a side note, we also have a Discord server now, so if you want to join, there is a link in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.